everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today I am super excited to be bringing you guys this video. I've done a couple of sewing machine review videos lately and if you read the comments, people are so opinionated about what the best sewing machine in the world is. This industrial sewing machine is amazing. But just because I love my cell right doesn't mean that's the particular sewing machine that's perfect for everybody. And so what you'll find if you, especially if you're new to sewing, if you've never owned a sewing machine, it can be so frustrating trying to pick the very best sewing machine for you, for your budget, for what you're trying to do. And if you ask somebody the blanket statement, what's the best sewing machine, they're going to give you their opinion based on what they sew and based on the number of sewing machines they've sewn with which there are very few people that have sewn with all the sewing machine brands, including myself. So you're gonna need a pencil and paper to write down some tips and things like that. But this video is intended by the end of this video so that when you go you do your research, you'll know what to look for according to what you're making, your budget and everything like that. I'm gonna help you to hone in on those things so that you can pick the very, very, very best sewing machine for you. So what I'm gonna ask, in order to help those who are doing this research out in a really positive way, that if you own a sewing machine, that you would go into the comment section right now and say what machine you have, the pros of it and the cons of it, and also say what you sew. Um, I think that it's going to just, as a sewing community, build up the sewing community and help out all the people who have that question, especially if you're a beginner. All right, so I hope you're ready. I hope you have your paper and pencil and you're ready to answer these tough questions. And hey, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. Here we do upcycling and I hope you will go along on this journey with us because we are creating some amazing things and definitely share this video to help that person out that you know is looking for a sewing machine or may eventually look for one and you wanna help them out in a positive way to get the sewing machine that's the best for them. The first question I have for you you is do you like bells and whistles and the way you can kind of answer that question really easily for yourself is the last time you went and picked a car are you the type of person that gets the car that is going to run the longest without you having to take it in for service or did you get the car that was the newer model and it had the premium features heated seats power everything the rear camera and all of that kind of stuff did you pick that car the reason i'm asking that is because sewing machines are the same way if you are the type of person like me that does not like to get your car serviced and would much rather not take it in unless you absolutely have to, then a mechanical machine is going to be the better option for you because mechanical machines tend to not have to be serviced as much. As long as you just clean them out, they tend to run for years and years and years without you having to service them. And I'm a witness to that. I have all mechanical machines. I don't own any computerized machines and it's for that reason. I don't like taking my machines in to get service. And for a mechanical machine, we're talking about ranging from a Juki HZL 27Z for $199, yes, $199, not bad at all, all the way to an industrial one like my Cellrite. Yes, they're considered mechanical machines and I absolutely love my Cellrite. It was $1,600, but stitches like you got it from the store. Absolutely love it. As far as mechanical machines go, it is my my ultimate. However, if you're the type of person that likes the bells and whistles, like you want multiple buttonhole types, automatic thread trimming, automatic needle threader, or automatic tension adjustment, etc., etc., then the computerized machine is definitely what you want to be looking for. And general computerized machines take a lot of the guesswork out of sewing. So yes, if you are a beginner, that may be a good option for you. On the other hand, it takes some time to learn, you know, all of those controls but if you have no issue with that you prefer the bells and whistles then you absolutely when you're doing your research look up computerized machines and then you won't even have to deal with the mechanical machines because you know your personality you know what type of machine you're looking for and these range from the brother cs 6000i for 189 dollars all the way to the bernina 480 for 2600 dollars yes i said 2600 dollars and you can read the specs for yourself to compare 
here all the different ones but they have a price range so you know if you know your price range you can look at the difference in what they offer but you'll know when you see it what you want all right so i hope you're ready for the next question the next question is what's your level of experience with sewing machines and i don't mean sewing because a lot of people have been hand sewing for years but this is their first machine so that will make you a beginner at sewing machines what's your level of experience with sewing machines would you consider yourself a beginner or an intermediate or advanced. And the reason this matters is because you're going to want to look at different specs depending on what your level of experience is. For instance, if you are a beginner, you may want to look for a one-step buttonhole. And the reason I say that is there is a difference. If you're a beginner, you're not gonna know this and you're gonna look and say, oh, it has a buttonhole and think that's good. There's a one-step buttonhole and there's a four-step buttonhole. A four-step buttonhole means that you have to complete four steps. You're gonna have to do each of those sides individually versus a one-step buttonhole that once you set it, it will do the whole buttonhole for you. That's a big difference to me. I do not want a machine with a four step buttonhole. I only want one with a one step. But if you're a beginner, you're not gonna know that. So definitely I would recommend looking for the one with the one step buttonhole. If you're a beginner, you definitely may want a needle threader. And then not only a beginner, but if you are, have a hard time seeing and if you have shaky hands or different things like that, having the needle threader is definitely gonna be beneficial. And like I said, especially you know if you are a beginner, that would be helpful as well. And as a beginner, you may need speed adjustment. Speed, when I say speed adjustment, what I mean is when you press your foot pedal, for instance, on my Singer Heavy Duty, when you press that foot pedal, that thing will take off. But it does have an adjustment within the foot pedal that you can slow it down. And a lot of other machines have it as well. And you want to make sure that if like this is your first machine, especially if you are scared, there's a lot of people that are really scared to use sewing machines. If you are scared, make sure that it has some type of speed adjustment so that when you're first starting, you can really slow that thing down until you get more comfortable and you're doing long stitches and you just want to take off then you can just go ease into it that's one of the reasons why i like my cell right because i i'm not gonna lie that you know as my first industrial machine i was kind of scared but the fact that it has so much control on the pedal and i can go super slow made me super comfortable with it and now i can take off with it but the fact that i could start off slow made me more comfortable so as a beginner i would definitely recommend that and if you are intermediate or advanced my question for you is do you have another sewing machine and will this new sewing machine be replacing the old one or will it be in addition to the old one and the reason this matters is because for me for instance when I got the brother strong and tough and the singer heavy duty I got both of them to do a review for you guys but I absolutely got those sewing machines because it filled a need that my old Bernina didn't have. And the need that it filled was I needed to sew through a lot of layers of denim and I wanted something inexpensive that was going to do that. Now, if I wanted to replace my Bernina, and I didn't want to replace my Bernina because my husband bought it for me many years ago and it's kind of a keepsake now, but if I wanted to replace that, then I would have had to look for something that had all the things I love about my Bernina in addition to the extra lift to put thick layers as well as being the power to sew through a lot of layers of denim or leather. So that would have changed what I was looking for. So because I was only going to add something in addition, I was able to lower my cost at the time that I bought those. They were only about $170 and I could just have two sewing machines and just get you know, use both of them depending on what I was doing. If I were going to replace it, I would probably have to go with the Genobi DC 2019. It's about $500. I think that that one would have been a good solution to replace all of them and get everything that I wanted. And the reason I would have had to do that is because I really, really wanted that feature where the needle always goes up or down. And I'm not really into computerized machines, but I would have had to go that direction because there's very few mechanical machines that have that feature nowadays all right so the next question is are you a tinkerer or are you willing to learn almost anything through YouTube and the reason I ask this question is because if you are then a used sewing machine is an option for you unless it's a refurbished one 
Refurbish is one thing. I'm talking about used from a thrift store, used from eBay, something that's not gonna come with instructions or a warranty. I would only recommend that for someone who is used to kind of tinkering with their sewing machines or just tinkering in general, or you're willing to learn anything and research anything on YouTube and you know complete those steps. So if that is you, then yes, a good used sewing machine is an option. You can find sewing machines for little of nothing from secondhand shops and thrift stores, as well as Facebook Marketplace and eBay. Those are excellent resources for sewing machines, especially nowadays that the demand is really high and everybody's looking for them. So you can go check out those uh, sites and see if you can find a really, really good one. And there are so many people that swear by the good old machines and the reason is is because those machines were made mostly the bodies of them were mostly made of metal they were made to last much like cars back in the day they were made to last and their parts they they sold through more layers their parts are more dependable and different things like that so like i said my old bernina i'm never going to give that up you do not you do not see that uh, particular line on ebay nobody gives them up so yeah you may be able to find a really, really good used sewing machine if you're willing to tinker with it or buy an additional part, maybe buy an extra foot pedal. They don't always come with the foot pedal. Um, buy the light, the light will probably be out, different things like that. Or it just may have something small wrong with it and you could possibly take it in to get service to get it fixed or you, and you know, just trying to tinker around with it yourself. And so many people have been able to get them working. All right, so my next question is, what are you sewing? Are are you doing occasional alterations? Are you sewing quilts? Are you sewing through tons of layers of denim like myself? Leather? Um, are you sewing masks, uh, regular clothing, drapes for whatever, or sales like the sale right? Many people who get that so make sales. It depends on what you're sewing for what machine is going to be right for you. So if you are asking me, who sews through tons and tons of layer what the best sewing machine is, I may tell you the Brother Strong and Tough, but that sewing machine is only, only the best sewing machine for people who sew through a lot of layers of denim like me. If that's not, if you're making masks, that's not the best sewing machine for you. It's not the best option. If you're making quilts, it's absolutely not the best option. So that's why I really wanted to make this video because it all depends on what you're making as to what the best sewing machine is. So for instance, if you do occasional alterations, that means you probably don't have a consistent space for your sewing machine. You're gonna need a basic sewing machine, lightweight with a cover, something that you can put away and only bring out when you're using it. Something like maybe the Brother XM2701. It's a basic sewing machine, get a cover. A lot of people say it's lightweight. You can put it away when you're not using it and then just, they come with a long warranty, just bring it out and you can kind of depend on the fact that it'll be working every time you need it. So if you're a quilter, a quilter, you're gonna need a wide table. Why is, as a quilter, would you buy a sewing machine, you know, that doesn't have a wide table or the option to add one? You're gonna need to have a drop fee for free motion sewing. If you're a quilter, you, you're definitely gonna need that. You're gonna want a lot of different stitches depending on, you know, what type of quilt. Some people, when they do quilts, they do a lot of, you know, all straight stitches, but a lot of quilters, they definitely want those tons of stitches and the sewing machine should say it's for quilting. Most quilting machines say that it's for quilting. So definitely look for that when you are researching machines. If you're sewing clothing, look at how many buttonholes it comes with. Most mechanical machines normally come with one. If you're doing computerized, you can get a ton. I think up to eight I've seen um, different buttonholes. I didn't even know it was that many buttonholes, but I have seen computerized machines come with up to eight buttonholes. So you definitely want to look at that. And you want consistent quality stitches. And so definitely read the reviews for these machines. And look, if people are saying they, they can't get consistent stitches, you, I don't care what you're sewing, you're not gonna like that. But if you're sewing clothing and you can't get good quality stitches, that's one of the things that I really, really look at. Because when I'm doing a top stitch and that stitch is gonna be seen, I definitely don't want something that's skipping stitches. And yes, you can, there's different things that you can do to the machine to you know, get it to 
be correct, but nobody wants to have to do that consistently. Once you figure it out, you want it to stay, you know, your stitches to stay pretty consistent. And some machines don't always do that so well. So yeah, look in the reviews and see if, you know, I think that would be a red flag. If you see a bunch of people saying that the stitches aren't consistent, then that's a red flag. That's probably not the machine for you. If you are sewing drapes, you want to look at the durability. I really think you want to try to get something with that metal body and you want something with speed. I cannot imagine trying to sew drapes on a slow machine and I would consider a slow machine anything, anything under 800 stitches per minute. And I really enjoy my machines that go a thousand or 1100 stitches per minute for stuff like that. If I'm doing something long, I want that sewing machine to fly. And so my cell right as well as a singer heavy duty does a thousand or more stitches per minute. And that's exactly what you want for something that you're going to be sewing um, long seams with. So definitely check that if you're doing drapes. And if you're doing denim or leather like me, you definitely want that extra high lift. You want that foot to have an extra high lift. And they'll say that in the specs, if the foot does that, it'll say extra high lift foot, as well as a strong motor. You want it to have a strong motor. And normally a domestic sewing machine, we're not talking about an industrial one. If you do tons of denim and leather, consider an industrial sewing machine. It's gonna be more expensive, but for, I mean, some of these domestic sewing machines are just as much, so you're not losing anything. Consider an industrial sewing machine if you're doing a lot of denim and leather, and especially a lot of layers. Um, if you're doing handbags and stuff like that, the, I wouldn't even really think about a domestic sewing machine unless you have a good old used one. But for denim and leather, if you're just doing clothing, stuff like that, you can consider a domestic sewing machine, but make sure it has the inside metal body. Make sure that it says something to the effect of like the singer heavy duty. It says heavy duty and brother strong and tough. And you may be able to get by with those until you get to the point where you really, really can't do any more other than to get an industrial sewing machine. And and it's absolutely okay to go in steps. That's what I did. I went in steps. The Singer Heavy Duty Brother and Strong and Tough and some other machines like that. There's other brands that have their version of a Strong and Tough for an inexpensive price. Those are perfectly acceptable as you're working your way up to an industrial sewing machine. All right, so that leads me to our next question. What are your sewing goals? Do you plan on changing what you're sewing along the way? So like for instance, if you're starting off with pillows and different things like that and you want to transition to fashion and then you want to transition into leather different things like that then or if you're a fashion student and you know for a fact that you are going to be doing this for at least four years and most likely beyond you may want to think about investing in something that is going to last you for your future goals and not just where you are currently then you could look at something a little bit more expensive something a little bit more durable or even something used that you pay a little bit more for in the beginning or you pay to get it fixed because you know that it'll serve your right now goals as well as your future goals. And then on the opposite side of that, if you're just beginning to sew and you don't know if you are going to keep up with this hobby, you don't even know if you're gonna like it, then I would definitely, definitely recommend that you find something very inexpensive, not a toy. I don't recommend toy sewing machines unless you are a kid. And those in my experience are even frustrating for kids. When my daughter had a toy sewing machine, she didn't want to sew on it because it was just too frustrating to operate. She was much happier once she started learning on my sewing machine. So I just say get a real sewing machine, but just make sure that it's no more expensive than $200. All right, so my next question is a really fun one and it's do you care about colors, the way it looks and different things like that? Um, I personally am the type of person that I care about everything, the whole package of the sewing machine, whether it's square or curvy, the color of it, just everything about it. And that can be kind of vain, but it's sitting on my table and I regard my machines as works of art just because that's just who I am. And so it has to look nice and it has to be cohesive with my space. So that is a determining factor. But the amazing thing is that currently there are machines for every style of person. If you like clean lines, there is the Bernina that is absolutely gorgeous with the clean lines, white and black. If you're into boho chic, then there's a brother. I think it is the JX3135 
25F. They give you the templates and you can pick which one you want to use or apply to the front of your machine. So I think that's really cool. If you want a really manly, super industrial looking machine, then the Jukies, the standard, they are amazing because they just look like they're in a factory. And if you're going for that look, I mean, they've been around for, it seems like forever. And that if that's your look, that's definitely what you're gonna go for. If you like your machines curvy, you have the Janomis or the Brothers. If you like them boxy, there's the Faf, I think I'm saying that right, or the Nietzsche. Um, they're both super boxy. I think they're absolutely gorgeous because I like boxy machines. And there's even futuristic looking machines like the Husqvarna uh, J20. Absolutely gorgeous machine. That emerald green, just amazing and super futuristic looking. So, and I actually, that machine is a really good one for those who like to put their machine away because it comes all packaged in one and you know, you can just put it in a cabinet or whatever, but it's super beautiful too. So yeah, um, there are machines for every style of person. And lastly, what is your price range? Is your price range 250 and below? Is it 500 and below, 1000 and below, or the sky's the limit? That is going to definitely dictate what you can get. But the reason I put this question last is because I really think that you should answer the rest of the questions first. Yeah, we all have a, only a limit of money that we can spend, but if you really Think about those questions and answer those questions. For instance, you might have said, okay, I just need a $200 sewing machine because I'm about to go to design school. And then you really think about it like, hey, um, I'm going to design school and I probably will need something as I go along that is a little bit better than that. Then that may make you say, hey, mom, you know, or hey, aunt whoever can you help me out and give me a little bit more funds so i can get actually what i need versus wasting my time with something that's only going to last me a year or maybe not even for my future goals so that's why i put that last i really really think that the other questions should be answered and you should really do your research and find out what's best for you and then kind of meet the money with that. But then on the opposite end, you might have said, oh, my budget is $500 and you would have bought a $500 machine. But when you see this video and you really do the research, you realize like, no, I don't need a $500 machine. I really just need to go spend $200 and get you know this perfectly good machine and save that other $300 for something else. So I hope, I hope this video has been helpful. Don't let people shame you. I mean, there is some sewing machine shame. I saw it in the comments of my previous videos about what brand, whether you get used or whether you don't get used, used are the best, this brand is the best, that brand is the best. I know a lot of us have a ton of machines and there may be, you know, some long comments, but don't, you know, it's gonna help somebody. So definitely go down and do that now. What you sew, what machines you have, you know, the pros and cons of them so that it helps somebody out. And the sewing community is gonna be so much better for it. And if you're interested in upcycling classes, I do have upcycling classes once a month with the highest level of my members only group. Hit that join button to learn more. And if you're looking for a free option, I do have a Facebook group where it's just a bunch of upcyclers that it's a super positive group. We help each other when we get stuck, share our before and afters, and people are even trading local resources. So definitely check the description box for the link to that. So I hope you guys have written down all your answers. You'll know exactly what to search for as you're going to search for these sewing machines. And I, the sewing machines that I have shown you, they're definitely a starting point. You can go and look at those. Hopefully they're available. I'm trying to pick ones that are currently available, but don't want to excuse the future because they will definitely come back in availability as we go along. But like my mother says, remember this, the best sewing machine is the sewing machine you are going to use. And what I mean by that is a lot of people get these sewing machines and they don't use them. They sit like when people buy the treadmills and they hang their clothes over it. That's how the sewing machines be sitting. So the best sewing machine is only the sewing machine that you're going to use and that you're going to create your amazing pieces with. So I don't care what it is. If you like it and if it's helping you create your amazing pieces, then it's the best sewing machine. All right, I have other upcycle videos over here for you as well as my sewing machine reviews. So you can definitely check those out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.